I am a 30 year old single mom and I'm still looking for my soulmate. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I have been through hell and back with dating and I'm so tired of using the dating apps. I'm so tired of doing the same thing and being let down and being disappointed. And so I thought long and hard about this and I really, really wanna hire a matchmaker. Also because I literally live in the worst city for dating statistically. And I feel like a matchmaker will be able to weed out the men that are not serious, weed out the men that are not financially stable and allow the men that are serious about looking for the love of their lives in a long-term relationship and bring them to the forefront. And that's exactly what I need. Now, the only thing that's getting in my way is that hiring a matchmaker is actually extremely expensive. I am a single mom, so unfortunately I can't go spend all my money on that. And that's why I have created a GoFundMe account. I did link it in my bio. I've never done this before. I've never asked people for money on the internet. I'm extremely nervous, but it's just something that I'm very passionate about and that I really believe in. I really think that it could really help me find the love of my life. And so, I think that, you know, it could possibly work. So if that's something that you're able to do, I really appreciate it. If you're not able to donate, then just liking the video, just sharing the video, uh, commenting on the video will help boost the video and get it to people um, that may be able to help me out and donate. But yeah, I'm tired of doing the same thing. Um, I'm tired of doing the same thing. And I think this will be a fun experience, especially for those people who are in the same boat as me, that they are looking for love and they're looking for new ways to meet people or do things. And I think as a single parent, it's also hard. So I can't wait to possibly, hopefully meet this goal and share that experience with you. Okay, so we have to break this up into parts, okay? So in this first initial video, this woman came on the internet and, you know, let her following on TikTok know that she wanted to, um, you know, pay for a matchmaker to be able to find her her partner in life and, um, you know, that she, she would like for them to donate to her GoFundMe so that she's able to afford the matchmaker and, you know, she would like uh, the opportunity of basically having having the ability to skip the vetting process, that somebody would be able to vet all the people out perfectly for her. She would just meet the person and then they would just, you know, ride off into the sunset and that would be it for the rest of her life. That would be her husband, her man, whatever the case is. And um, this video that we're going to see now is her response to a lot of the backlash that she received after posting the initial video. So I'm going to play this part. And like I said, there's like four parts of this video. I'm going to play this second part. And then I'm going to give you my opinion about the whole synopsis after that. Such a busy day today. So get ready with me and let's chat. A lot of people have been asking me if I've been seeing the videos that have been circulating about me. I've seen some of them, but honestly, I choose to not watch most of the time. I'm all about protecting my peace, and if you're mad, that's on you. I've seen a lot of people say that I should go on Love is Blind, which I would totally be down for, but they're not coming to Atlanta. Atlanta was the first city they came to. I've also been getting Pop the Bloom. I think it's on TikTok. I've never seen it before, but that's honestly just not my thing. I am looking for a partner, meaning I am open to both men and women. I've just never dated a woman before, so I'm just not sure how it would go. So the decent or men jargon, I'm open to both. I find it so funny when people say I'm desperate because I'm so far from that. Like, I want to find love, don't get me wrong, but trust me, I have standards. I refuse to settle. And just because I'm openly saying what a lot of single people are afraid to admit, I'm being called desperate. But at the end of the day, I am just perfectly comfortable saying that. Like, that does not embarrass me at all. I, it's not a big deal to me. It just blows my mind that we're in 2024 and other women are shaming women for wanting love. Like, that shit's crazy to me, but like, go off if you want to. I talk a lot about my dating life on my page. So if you're going to stay or if you have followed me, just be aware of that. Because I'm going to continue doing me, honey. Like... And I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, love the people that have been so supportive and have been so kind. You guys are amazing. At the end of the day, it is never that deep. Okay, so 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 this is her response, like I said, to the backlash of people who are saying, you know, that you're out here on the internet asking people for money for a GoFundMe to, you know, pay for a matchmaker. Listen, this is the thing, right? A matchmaker is a non-essential item. Like, this is a non-essential entity that you are asking people to support you on and to help fund, you know, 
uh, what it is that you want to do within your personal life. This is not like you're a single mother who's coming on the Internet, who can't pay for groceries, who, you know, can't do whatever the case is. Like, this is a very, like, frivolous thing that you are telling your supporters that they would just have the opportunity of being able to watch you uh, you know, navigate and find whoever it is that you're looking for in whatever way. You have to know that the same nerves that you had in the beginning, but you know, before you decided to come on the internet and ask people for money, that there's going to be a certain level of backlash that people are going to provide to you. And you know that before you even do it. Like you obviously had that in your mind, which is why you were nervous of even asking to begin with. Okay, so so that's one. My thing is that it's it very much seems like you were out here. You're just out here with just vibes <laughs> like the vetting process. If, even if a matchmaker can go through all the hoops and say that this person is 100 percent, you know, your match and you guys, you know, on paper, it seems like you two would be the best couple. There are a lot of things that could happen between the two of you when nobody else is around that will make you second guess if you want to be with this person, if you really like this person, if you want a relationship with this person. There is no skipping the vetting process. Maybe somebody can help you narrow it down. Maybe that's, that's what it is that you're talking about. But you are literally asking people to pay for you to find a husband. But I got to be honest with you. The fact, and this is just my personal opinion. This is just an opinion. The fact that you are on the internet as a single mother it, and, and you're asking for people to help fund a matchmaker for you, it is showing that your pr priorities might be a little bit out of whack. Because you're just going on dates. You're just out here just trying to kick it with somebody. You're just trying to find a husband and hence... Why people are standing in this space and calling you desperate or using the word desperate to describe your situation. It's because you're not even thinking about your child. I don't know what child you have. If you have a boy or a girl or multiple. I have no idea. But you said a single mother with a child. So I'm, I'm assuming you have one child. I don't know which child you have. But again, this is why the vetting process is very important because you don't even know who you're going to have around your child. You don't even know who this person is for real. You have to take the time to analyze them, to spend time with them, to see how they are, how they move, what they like, what they don't like. How do they feel about children? How they feel? You know, you have to do that. There's nobody else that can do that for you. You can't skip the process. That's just keeping it real. Like in reality, you cannot skip the process of trying to figure out if you can be compatible with somebody or if somebody is that person for you. It's, it's just not possible. It's not possible. Also, in being out there, the the potential suitors, the men who are out there who are who have probably seen this video now that it's gone viral, are kind of looking like, hmm, you said that you want a partner, you say that you want a spouse, and now you're saying you don't care who it is. You just want somebody, anybody. And you don't think that that tone comes across as desperate. I don't care if it's a man, woman, I don't, I don't, anybody, anybody want me, somebody come get me, please. Like, you don't think that some way, somehow that seems a little, like, desperate? Like, that's what the, the you know, the, the people are using that word to describe. It, it does come across that way. And the last thing that you want to do as a woman with a child, as a single mother, is come across as desperate and willing to handle, take, deal with any possible situation. Because it's very forthcoming. It's, it's like seeping through your pores at that point. Oh, she will. I, I could I could just take her through the ringer because she just she want anybody. She want a man so bad that, you know, I could just do whatever. Well, she want to be with anybody so bad as a woman, you know, that's coming in and dating you. Oh, I could just take advantage of all the stuff that she want because she ain't even been in this situation before. It sounds wild, okay? It sounds like, like I said, that you just out here with just vibes. You just winging it. Whatever way the wind blow, that's the way that you blowing and flowing. And I think, you know, it's very unhealthy to have that kind of mindset. 
Now, let me say this. There's nothing. I do not believe that anybody is saying there's anything wrong with you wanting to, you know, find your spouse, find your 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 other half, find your husband or whatever it is that you're looking for, that you want to be in a relationship that you want happily ever after. But my number one question is what happened with your child's father? What happened in that dynamic? What was the situation? Why didn't that work out? Because now you have a lifelong commitment with this person, but what was the straw that broke the camel's back that you couldn't figure out that situation? Then now you just out here just wanting any and everybody. I'm confused. Then I came across this next video, these next two videos, where, um, you know, she was talking about one of her dating stories with one of her previous people and she talked about how that situation is, is uh, you know, broken up and that they're no longer dealing with each other. I just want you guys to hear this. Me and Jean Jacket are officially done. If you don't know who Jean Jacket is, it's codename for my friends with benefits situationship that I have been on and off with for about a year. And you're probably thinking, girl, a situationship at your big age? Yes, because it's okay to not want to be celibate. And most people ask, oh, but I thought you were looking for love. Me and him were on the same page that he didn't care that if I continued dating. We did agree that if we were to find somebody else and we wanted to hook up with that person, we would let each other know. So yes, absolutely. I am still looking for love. I am still looking for that connection. I will say though, that now that this one's done, I will never get into another situation, friends with benefits situation ever again. I was just comfortable with him, you know? And we enjoyed spending time together. But at this point, it's getting very disrespectful and my boundaries have just been crossed. But it's not like this is the first time. I'm just really starting to realize how unimportant I am to this person. And it's gradually gotten worse and worse over time. I take full accountability in my actions, though. Like, I am the reason why I'm at the point <laughs> and where I'm at now. There are just times where I don't want to be alone and I want company. He was those things for me but I just need to let it go at this point. Also, I feel like I might've been blinded by the D a little bit. <laughs> anyway, maybe I'll go live and go into full detail. But yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. I'm gonna tell you the boundary that he crossed that made me realize that this man just did not care about me. And this is a boundary that is important to me in any type of relationship, friendship, anything. If you don't agree, that's okay, it's my boundary. One thing that I cannot deal with is a flaky person or someone that cancels all of the time. So I haven't talked to this man in a month. That is a story for another time, but just know that we hadn't talked in a month. He ends up texting me like, hey, how are you? I miss you. I reply back and we decide to hang out that Friday. But then he texts me again and he's like, actually, let's hang out this Tuesday because I don't want to wait till Friday. And he's like, I still want to see you on Friday but I don't want to wait. Tuesday rolls around, he comes over, we hang out. I'm still looking forward to hanging out on Friday and I reiterated that to him. So Thursday night rolls around and I send him a message because I have suspicion that he's gonna cancel like he always does. Sure enough, I ask him and he's like, yeah, I have to cancel. And I'm like, when were you gonna tell me? He's literally always canceling on me and I'm literally just so over it. Of course he blamed it on work, but honestly, I know it's an excuse. There is no point of us being friends if you're gonna cancel and bell on me every single time. And honestly, you came and you got what you wanted on Tuesday and then you bounced, you didn't care. And there's so much more that I could go into detail about because it honestly sounds like it's not that big of a deal, but it seriously happens all the time and I am so tired of it. Crossing my fingers that I can hold true to this. <laughs> Sometimes it takes that one reason, big or small, and then you're just done. So let me get this straight, okay? Let me just get this straight. You want the people to donate for you to have a, you know, don't donate to your GoFundMe so that you can pay for a matchmaker to hook you up with possibly a nice guy that will be your husband and also be a stepdaddy to your child. And you out here giving that cootie cat away to your quote unquote friends with benefits so this, this new nice man is going to come in blindsided to the fact that you probably just slept with somebody two days ago? 
Girl, be for real. Okay, just, just, girl, what are you talking about? The fact that there's this whole long spiel about like, oh, you know, and the respect and he broke a boundary and the, the respect for yourself is already out the window when you agree to have friends with benefits as a woman. I'm sorry. It's just true. The lack of self-respect that you have for yourself, he is going to feel that and he already knows that because why would you agree to have me come over here and service you every now and then, but there is no other tie to that? If you don't value yourself, why should I value you? You're asking us the questions and you're also answering them the, the same way. Oh, because you came over here on Tuesday and got what you wanted. The minute that he said he couldn't wait until Friday, you should have known that there was an itch that he had that only you could scratch. That's why he pulled up on you. What would be the reason for you guys to go anywhere and hang out? There's no big commitment. The friends is just to make yourself feel better about the situation that goes on, but that is not your friend. That's not your friend. The only, he, only thing he cares about is that when he called you at 3 o'clock in the morning, that you say, yeah, you can pull up. That's it. And again, going back to the initial GoFundMe that you talk about dating and single mother and this like that, it just sounds, again, like you out here with just vibes. Like, that's the only thing that I can keep describing this as. Because even that kind of situation when you have a child that they probably know this person or the dynamic between you and this person and they know this is mommy's friend and the actual situation that you guys have going on is very toxic it's sending weird signals now i don't know if your child is around usually when this stuff happens I, you know i'm gonna assume on a tuesday night that possibly your child's gonna be with you so i would assume that they would know who this person is and even the fact that, you know, at the end of this video, she's saying that she's hoping that she can hold herself to it, that she won't call him again. But he's showing you how he feels. He's showing you, you know, how little he thinks of you. He's showing you that you don't matter. You're saying that you're taking, oh, yeah, well, you know, I know it's my fault that I'm in this situation. So, again... Let's bring it all together. If it's your fault that you're in this situation, why would other people need to sit down and provide you with resources for a matchmaker when you might turn that situation into what you already got going on in your real life? We got to think about that. You're saying that you have this, you know, this person that they don't, they don't cross the boundary and this, what boundary? Like, for what boundary? You don't have... There's no boundary in having a friends with benefits as a woman. There's no boundary. You can't get in your feelings. You can't get emotional. You can't question about nothing. You can't cry. You can't do nothing because you're the one who signed up for it. Because you're the one who pro provides the access to intimacy. You set the stage. That means it is what it is. There's nothing that this person could be doing wrong. Because you're holding this quote unquote friends with benefits to a standard that you would hold somebody that you're in a relationship with. Hence why women cannot do what men can do, especially when it comes to things like friends with benefits. Because as a woman, your feelings are always going to get hurt. You always going to get the short end of the stick on that deal. Always. No man is going to be sitting there crying because he, he done pulled up and, and got what he wanted and, and, and dipped. There's nothing that's going to strike any kind of negative emotion out of a man in that way. <laughs> like, let, let's just be for real. I think that this situation just exposes a lot of the... Like, if you want to know the issues that you're having when it comes to dating and relationships and, and stuff like that, I think that just watching all of these videos from a second person point of view would kind of show you this, the, the missteps that you're having.
Say, for instance, you get involved with this really nice guy who is willing to be a stepfather and willing to marry you and willing to do all these things. And he asks you, oh, you know, what's the last time that you were intimate with a person? What was that situation like? What are you going to do, lie? Because telling him, oh, yeah, you know, um, even though that I got this GoFundMe and I found a matchmaker and I, and I was looking for you, you know, I kind of got lonely. So I had a, a little friend that used to come over and, you know, uh, help me out every now and then intimately. And, you know, the last time I saw him was like two weeks ago. But, like, it's totally fine because I'm going to let him know that I found you and he can't do that no more. How do you think that sounds? <laughs> He's going to be sitting there like, uh, you playing games. A lot of women are in the spaces that they're in, especially when it comes to finding relationships, because they're always thinking about what they deserve. But why is it that they're never thinking about the man who is going to come into their life and who's going to be with them? Why are they never thinking, what does this man who's going to be with me, what does he deserve? How can I elevate myself to be the woman that would be perfect with the man who I would like to be with? What can I do differently? What can I do to be better? What can I do to change? To be honest, you shouldn't even be asking nobody to help you find no matchmaker before that whole situation was even done with. That's honest. Because it just sounds wild. Again, free for all, just vibes. <laughs> I'd like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. I would love to hear you guys' opinions on this video. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next one. Love you.